All right. When you're actually considering the number of drip lines to install in a bed or in your, your, your area, your garden, you need to kind of have an idea of what type of soil you have. Because look how water performs in a sand versus loam versus clay. Sand has large pore space. It has low capillarity. It doesn't run sideways. So it, most of it just goes straight down. So if I'm in sandy ground, would I need more or less drip tubes in a given width? Need more, right? Because it's not going to move sideways. All right, of course, loam is intermediary. And then clay, wow, we have some orchards. Uh, I know, Charles, some, clay, some pecans are in clay. Man, they space these things way out because these things will, I mean, they'll wick, what, four or five feet sideways? It's crazy in some of the, the tight clays. And so you're actually saving money that way. But, uh, you know, there's some other issues associated with clay soil we won't talk about right now. Okay, so here we go. This is the real world. We've got a bed, a pretty narrow bed. It's about, uh, what, 18, 20 inches wide? One tube in this soil is all we need. Ah, there's Amy at work in one of our hoop houses. We have 40-inch beds with loam soil, and based on our experience, we need two lines. Very, very important to get water to wick over to the edge of the bed. If we're growing spinach or carrots or some greens out there that we can get close, we need to be able to water them, and that's the way to do it. Okay, as far as materials for your main line and your, your sub-mains, there's three options. You've got polyethylene tubing, PVC, and then this lay-flat vinyl. Some of it's lay-flat PVC. The most popular now is this material right here. Generally speaking, for just a supply line, um, you can find larger diameter PVC pipe. But the issue is, you know, it's all the joints you have to, to weld, and that takes time. Some people don't like messing with the vault, you know, the, the cleaner and the glue. It is toxic, but uh, obviously if you follow directions, you'll be fine. But uh, this has a tendency to crack and break underground and tight soils where it, it moves a lot, the shrink swell of the soil, it can break the welds. This is a little bit more forgiving, okay? This is used primarily for uh, in vegetable crops where they're annuals. We just lay it on top of the ground, a supply line, and then we take it up. We can even drive over it. You drive over this, no, no. Some this, some of the heavy duty oval pipe you can drive over, but this is designed to drive over. Show you some applications. Here we go, here's a one inch, uh, poly. We've got the line actually uh, just embedded in it. We don't have any adapter. This is a uh, poor man's way of doing it, but it works very, very well to a bed, plastic bed, plastic culture uh, cucumbers. This is a raised bed garden, a big booger. Um, this individual has uh, some fittings here that he actually has an adapter and then he has valves and then it goes to a row of beds that extend and then he has risers off of these. And then notice he's got three, three rows of tape, and that bed is like four feet wide. Hmm. Some experience tells him to, he's done this right. Now the only issue, if you were, if this was your garden and you're in a hurry and you're always looking up, what could happen here? Man, it's big time trip, trip hazard. So I would have buried all of this, and then I'd come up right here. Something to think about. Okay, how do you knock, punch a hole? Uh, there are different uh, tools. I've got some laying out there. You can punch a hole, uh, actual cut a hole, or punch one. This one is kind of a, it's actually a punch. It's a very sharp uh, little tube there, and that will fit the uh, button or the adapter, okay, that, uh, that your drip line hooks onto. Now, here's the deal. You better know, <laughs> get the right size of tool for the right size of uh, tubing you're going to use. Are you... You can have a lot of goof plugs to, to buy, okay? And they do make goof plugs for people who goof up. You will goof up, so plan on buying goof plugs. Y'all get that? Okay. Okay. Here's another uh, uh, use of the tool with the lay flat. A little more tricky. It's, it's not as, it's more pliable. It's hard to get. You got to be careful of your punch holes through the other end of it or the other side. Come out the side. So it can be done. I like just using a sharp, uh, like a, an ice pick myself, uh, a big ice pick, a real sharp 
piece of steel or very, very uh, uh, sharp piece of high-density high polyethylene. There is one out there that you could use. Okay, this is the standard for vegetable crops commercial in Oklahoma. You've got your lay-flat pipe here. You punch a hole. You don't drill it. You just punch a hole and you force the, the tubing into it. And, it, and it, it just snakes down here so it can't pull out. By the way, it's very hard for this to slip out as this thing snakes because it's got a lot of it embedded. Now you get too much and you lose pressure because all that water going through a little bit of hose is not a good thing. But this can be about three feet long most of the time. Then you have your adapter here. Uh, and this is a valve rather. So each, each uh, bed can be controlled independently. That's great when you need to make uh, uh, repairs. You can turn that one off without ha turning your drip system off. This is another way to hook it up. I do not like this. Uh, there's a barb there, but this is flexible. That barb always pulls out. And then what, what we have to do is stick just a piece of that small spaghetti tubing, small diameter poly pipe in that hole, just like I showed you before, and that, that will correct it. To me, this is not the way to do it. Don't do that. You heard it here first. Okay, this is the Noble Foundation several years ago. You notice here's inflated uh, poly pipe, excuse me, the lay flat. We drive right over it. Now, it's better not to drive over it when it's full of water, but, but it's not like it's got a thousand pounds in it. If you do, you usually won't tear up stuff. Okay, I would rather have you turn it off and then drive over it. But you can work your fields while you irrigate. That's the beauty about drip. You can be doing all the cultural work in the field, still irrigate at the same time. Okay, this is uh, brambles. Uh, we just planted these, and notice this is poly pipe, but instead of having the embedded emitters, we go with spot emitters. These pop in. That way we can put one at the base of each plant, and we can put more in. Now, they're a little more expensive, but there's, there's something nice and flexible about that. These, some of these you can actually buy that you can take apart and clean out. A little more expensive, but they are a little more flexible in, in the way that you use them. Um, most people are just going with the pre-installed emitters because when you pull that, now you think about when you're pulling that up, if you pull it real hard and you catch on something, it'll pop that out and then you'll have a leak. And then when you put it back in, it doesn't seal as well. We've all been through that. So, but this is one way to do it. With, uh, works excellent with uh, the, the, the uh, small fruits. One other slide. How many of you grow grapes? Oh, everybody. Okay, well, one person. Two. <laughs> Most vineyards are set up like this where you actually have your, your drip hose up off the ground. Now, is that absolutely necessary? No, it's not. But it doesn't snake as much. And when I say, I think Charles is going to talk more about this later. I'm stealing some of his thunder, I think, on some of the stuff. But they have it along the, the wire here. And the main reason for that is that you can apply your herbicides. You can do some stuff to the orchard floor here without having to move your pipe around. It's not. You can do that with just about anything, fruit trees, but generally this is kind of the common uh, practice in grapes. 